Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Rhonda Kelly. I am with Kelly Holding. We're the event organizers for the Cayman Islands Classic. I'm just here to kind of facilitate these gentlemen, and I'm going to start by introducing um, those that are sitting at the head table. Um, in the center is the Honorable Minister Moses Kukernel, Minister for District Administration, Tourism, and Transport. Very honored to have him here. He is such a great supporter of the Cayman Islands Classic. On his right is Coach Victor, also known as Voot O'Garo, the president of KMAX, which are the owners of Cayman Islands Classic. And to his left is Mr. Joe Wright, who is the CEO of KMAX Sports. And I will now turn it over to um, Coach Voot O'Garo to just make a couple opening remarks. You can make them there if you're more comfortable. Um, and uh, talk a little bit about what has happened with Cayman Islands Classic up to now. Pleasant good evening to all. It's a pleasure to see everyone here today. I'd like to pay special mention to Honorable Mr. Moses Kokanel, the Minister of Tourism. Absent, noticeably absent, is the Minister of Sports, Honorable Julian O'Connor Connolly. Now, these two ministries have been very instrumental in what we are about to talk today. We are about to talk about KMAC Sports and the Cayman Islands Classic. It gave me great privilege to speak about this because this was the brainchild of the person to my extreme left, Mr. Joe Wright and myself. As much as 10 years ago, we were speaking about this. We spoke at different lengths about what we can do to make basketball better in the Cayman Islands. That was my first thought. And he saw it as a, a means of propelling it to a different level. And with the blessings and, in, and encouragement from the ministers involved, here we are today, the third year, the Cayman Classics, and it's growing year by year. One of the things that is admirable about the Cayman Classic is we started asking team through our tournament director, who is absent today, and I, make an ex I, I would like to excuse him, Mr. Mr. Mo, Maury Hanks. What happened is, we decided that we are going to grow this sport in a big way in this little island. However, what we found is that people, after coming to Cayman Islands and enjoying our, com our friendship, our hospitality, Cayman kind, so to speak, were starting to ask questions. And coaches were asking about what can they do to be a part of the Cayman Classic. Now, we thought after the first year, we'll have to go fish. But the fishes came to us, and they're asking. So in, in 2020, right, this year has already been selected. The amount of call that our tournament director, Mr. Maury Hanks, is having, we will be choosing the quality team that we are, we are expecting. Hopefully, in the near future, we'll be hearing the, the Dukes and all the others willing to come. However, there are countries who are offering much more than we are, we are offering. But with our lovely sauna and our, our friendly humankind, the, the word is spreading throughout America. You've got to go to the Cayman Islands. So people are calling me, they are calling Maury Hanks, they are calling Joe to find out more about the Cayman Classic. So this year we have a, a good lineup of eight teams, which Mr. Joe will speak more about, and we're expecting a bright tournament again. And once again, I'd like to say thank you to the ministry for their support, all the sponsors who have been here with the media. Without the media, we have nothing. And all who have helped and continue to help to develop the Cayman Classic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just a couple of the facts that um, we had one, over 1.1 1 .1 million views. Um, we went Facebook Live for the last tournament for the first time, and that was just a huge success. The economic impact is estimated over U.S. $2 million. And I'm now going to hand it over to the Honorable Minister for Tourism, who um, is such a, an amazing supporter as an event company in the Cayman Islands who do a lot of sporting events. Sports tourism for us is just amazing as a, as a, as a local income for us and for all the other companies that benefit from it. So I'd like to just turn it over to Minister Kerkernel to speak a little bit about that aspect of the tournament. Thank you very much, Kelly, and a very pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Welcome. The Cayman Islands has earned a reputation for being a premier sports tourism destination for hosting high quality international sporting events. We are very pleased to partner with KMAC Sports and the Ministry of Sports. 
for the annual Cayman Islands Classic. This tournament brings some of the leading U.S. men's college basketball teams to our shores and delivers significant economic and promotional benefits to our island. Last year, millions of active users were able to tune in via Facebook's extensive streaming network, providing the Cayman Islands with tremendous global exposure. As well as providing excellent facilities at the John Gray Gymnasium, we look forward to extending our unique brand of Cayman Kindness to the visiting teams to ensure their time with us will be productive and especially memorable. Many of the players will have their families joining them, and we also expect to have members of the various school alumni here to support their teams. This is truly an initiative of three generational tourism, which we're doing extremely well with. Kelly has given me the privilege today to announce the teams. Yes. Coach, coach, thank you very much for allowing me to do this. Colorado State Rams. For those of you looking this way, you can see the logos right up there. George Mason Patriots. Loyola Chicago Ramblers. Nebraska Cornhuskers. New Mexico State Aggies, Old Dominion Monarchs, University of South Florida, Washington State Cougars. Yeah. Okay. Now, now that we have had the announcement of the team, for those of you who don't know, Facebook, after hearing about this tournament, decided to come on board. And Facebook was so impressed last year after having 1.1 million viewers, they decided to come again. And hopefully they'll continue to come as, as we progress, right? Um, we have a whole international slew of people. People are calling and asking, and we are growing. And if we had 1.1 million this year, last year I know, this year we could pass that 2 million bid. You on to my. Thank you for coming out today. We're, we're excited for our third annual Cayman Islands Classic. Uh, we feel that the teams this year have uh, great alumni support. Uh, a lot of these teams don't get to play in, in some of the bigger preseason tournaments, so they're pretty excited about coming to the Cayman Islands and, and try to prove themselves. We had uh, five of these teams went to the NCAA tournament. A lot of teams really does not hear about the Old Dominions and the New Mexico States in the South Floridas, but uh, we feel like they're really good, strong teams. Even Nebraska Cornhuskers, they got a, a, a new coach, uh, Fred Hoiberg, which is a good friend of mine. They're going to come down strong. So we, we feel like the alumni are going to come down this year, probably more so than last year. We're excited for everybody to come down, and, and uh, uh, we've gotten great response. Uh, we have a great uh, field of, of referees that are coming. A lot of our referees that come down to our tournament each year are in the Final Four or doing a lot of the main big games on Saturday afternoons during during the basketball season. So we're excited for our third year. Uh, we're looking for good things to happen. And uh, I can't wait for, for the next four or five months before it starts. That's always my favorite time. Well, I got one more thing. My favorite time is always going to the practices and watching the teams practice and listen to, listening to the coaches. But uh, after the three days that I'm in the gym for straight, straight three days, when it comes down to the last game, I'm kind of sad because it's all over and we have to wait another year for the next year. But we're excited for it to come, and, and I can't wait. Um, we'd like to open up now for any questions that any of you might have. All right, I think I have the mic over here. This is Sean Gallego from Radio Cayman Sports. Um, we heard that Wisconsin Badgers pulled out of the 2019 Cayman Classics. Um, do you guys know why they pulled out, the yes, reason sir. behind it, and how this may affect the tournament? It will not affect the tournament. However, what happened is when the teams play at home, okay, each team has two games at home. If they play two games at home, it's a money-making event for the school. If they come to this tournament this year, they'll only play one game 
and that'll be a large loss from the the, the, the school fact um, the school pocket so they decided to pass this year and they're asking us please to include them in the future so it's a, it's about a it's an economic decision that they made because the, if they come to this tournament they can only play one home game whereas at present they all they all already slated to play two home games not be aware this is the NCAA or NCAA um, tournament um, but y can you just explain why the Cayman Islands national men's basketball um, may not be able to compete or cannot compete um, against these teams during the tournament do we want to explain that uh, say that again I didn't hear the question okay. yeah there's some people may not be aware that it's a NCAA tournament right um, so can you give us a reason or just kind of explain to us why the Cayman Islands national basketball oh, okay. team cannot um, sure. take part or be involved in this particular tournament? Sure, sure, sure. Um, uh, this is an NCAA uh, men's college basketball tournament, which they only play against universities from the United States. So the reason why we can't have the national team compete in this event is because they're, they're actually not qualified under the NCAA rules. So that's the only reason that they can't play. We would love to have them come into the tournament, but but that's just the way the NCAA tells us what we have to do. We have to have eight teams from the United States come and compete in these preseason basketball tournaments, and they're all over the country. And this is my last question, I promise. Um, besides the huge economic impact uh, that the Cayman Islands Classic makes, um, what other benefits do you think this tournament um, provides or, or would, would provide? Well, I've already seen it seeing at present the big impact that basketball has had in the, in, the, in the country. When you look at our tournament, for example, since we start having the tournament, our primary school league, for example, you have 22 teams playing primary school basketballs. 22, 11 male, 11 female. In under 14, we had 17, right? Under 16, we had a total of 12. Under 19, we have a total of 11. Seniors, male and female, we have a total of 21. So we are already seeing the growth of basketball. Plus the academies on the island, they are all growing because of the, the impact that the sport has had on the younger generation. So I'm already seeing it's, it's blossoming. I think the outreach is huge, and I'm really glad Coach brought that up. Um, we know that, that they offer their time to do clinics for the youth of the island. We also know that they KMAX organization, I think last year gave out over a thousand free tickets for the youth of the country to come and watch the tournaments. And, and they get to interact with some of the best basketball players in the United States in the college years that soon you will see them on TV playing in the, in the, the big show, as they call it, in the league. So for us to have that opportunity, imagine um, talking about that um, you had LeBron James visit you if he'd gone to college um, when he was here. But, but those are the kind of opportunities that we get. And from being at the gym and watching the, the games being played, the, the excitement from our young people that go there when they start cheering. And, and by the end of the tournament, they pick their favorite team. And they're following that team. And I can assure you they're watching them and following them during the year as well. So from a country standpoint, we see tremendous benefit for this, for, for our growing um, youth of the island and what they have the opportunity to get involved from a sports standpoint. Certainly from, I mentioned the three generational um, tourism aspect which we are heavily um, promoting. We, we choose a time um, which is convenient for a valley in our arrivals the 25th, 27th of November. We support it. Um, so we have plenty of rooms available at that time for the tournament. And if you think about three generation is the young man that's playing on the team, the father that's the age of the coach, and then the grandparents that are with them, I guarantee you the ones that came originally to see this tournament, our return from those visitors is much higher than our average, which is around 55%. But I would say the return out of this is probably around 70% of the guests that come down. Good afternoon, uh, Jordan Armini, Scheme 27. A uh, question for Minister Kirkconnell. Sorry, just quick clarifying question regarding the camps, because the camps that happen around, they don't actually involve the players. Are you saying that they will involve the players this year? Because the previous camps are just separate. Uh, talking about the Kamana Bay 
the the one that's held in the Arkan record because those those camps don't have those NCAA players in it. Are you saying that they will have it this year? I'm talking about the access that our young people have to the players that come down for the tournament itself. Yeah. Well, and, you and said the word. Sorry to jump in. You said clinic, but there is no. There have not been. There have been no clinics. They are allowed to take pictures of them and stuff, but. Any, any basketball camp that's happened was unrelated to the players, so I just wanted to clarify, players are not holding clinics with the Cayman's youth basketball hopefuls, yes? Yet. The, the players are not allowed, uh, let right. me answer. Right. I just want, I thought yeah, that's I what you were saying. Okay, cool, cool, cool. cool. No fair question. I thought fair, that that was something question. that was the like, oh, are something's new happening. To hold clinics. Let me explain something very important. Mm. That we in the Caribbean play FIBA basketball. I want everybody to understand that. FIBA basketball and NCAA basketball is two different types of basketball. So for someone to come here and play basketball in our region, if you notice when they go to the Olympics, they play FIBA because we had a world governing body, that's FIBA. NC says an NCAA is an entity by itself on its own. So if, you, if someone from the NCAA comes to Cayman or any other country that is FIBA associated to play basketball, you have to learn the FIBA rules. So if, let's say, our national team, for example, we cannot play the NCCA basketball, the rules are different. We have to adapt and learn that, right? So just a few examples for those who understand the game. A player could call timeout during the game. We cannot do that in FIBA. The coach called the timeout. So it's extremely important to know that it's two different types of basketball. Hence the reason a national team cannot go and play there. The referee will blow on like, they're like, what? Now, NCA basketball is developed for America. However, when they come to FIBA or World Games, they have to adapt. Hence the reason in 2006, they lost to Greece. In Japan, I was there, they were confused with the rules. So what Mike Shijewski did, he took them and he groomed them and taught them the FIBA rules because we are the world governing body. So coming here to play, they're coming under the auspices of, of the, if they have to play, they play under the auspices of the world governing body. So, so sorry, Christopher, just give me a minute. Uh, Follow up with my actual question, uh, Minister. So, I, you guys, uh, the Ministry uh, of Tourism, has supported the, t the tournament each of the three years, yes? Um, so, I guess my question is number one, can you disclose how much you're committing to the tournament? And number two, why do you continue to make that commitment to the tournament? What does the tourism see like finite in terms of numbers? I, I mean, you've talked a little bit about. Uh, you know, kind of everybody's talking about uh, showing the Cayman Islands the best side of the Cayman Islands, put the island putting its best foot forward, you know, more but good for tourism, more people here, that all those broad strokes. But what specifically have you seen, like numerically, that has given you the confidence to invest for a third year in the tournament? And what is that investment, if you can disclose it? So when we look at how we're going to build our tourism product, we, we look at when we have rooms available. Because obviously, if we had a tournament like this in high season, there would be no rooms available for this tournament, and we wouldn't get an economic benefit for the Cayman Islands from it. So the timing is number one. Because they can fit this into what we have, as I call a valley in our arrivals, and we have rooms that are available, they fit around that valley. So, so the number of people they bring we can safely say would not come to the Cayman Islands in that time slot if we didn't have this tournament. So then we look at it from the standpoint of how much are they going to spend. So the alumni have, have qualified themselves to be what we would say is a prime visitor for us because we know their income is above the mean. So that's somebody that we would target. The second part of it is the, the gateway cities that some of these come from Tampa is a perfect example. We have direct flights into Tampa. The other ones, if you have a direct flight in there. So we make it easy for them to get here. Then we can feel confident that if we had 2,000 people that came only because this tournament was being played and those select dates and their rooms available, and each one of them spent $2,000, we can do the multiplier on that. So that's the first win why we will continue to support this. The second is the million, over million people that saw probably for the first time the Cayman Islands and, and think about the wholesomeness of what they see. They, they see a state-of-the-art gym that is in the Caribbean region. 
Um, so if you're thinking about sports and you're thinking about what kind of facilities do they really have in the Cayman Islands, and when you see that this is top shelf um, facilities that are available, right away you're starting to do your marketing in a way that appeals to people that are looking for this kind of destination. So, so that is why I say if, if our target is that we want 55% returns out of visitation, um, we believe that this gives us a higher than 55% return. And this is, this is a marketing budget that didn't, our budget didn't get touched because this is money that we didn't spend on a marketing program, it was done by the tournament itself. Okay, so is there a, like a numerical, I guess, threshold that you set in investing in this tournament? Obviously, with the eyes on the product, that's kind of just people through the gate, and like you said, 55% return is what you're going after with the alumni and whatnot. In the past two years, is there a like a visitation or some sort of numerical threshold that you've looked at in that downtime that you've described where it's like okay we are happy with this and we'll continue to invest on top of the fact that you're getting more eyes now with the it being streamed by stadium and things like that like what have you sat down and looked at like that or is it just is it kind of a broad stroke i guess i'm just looking for a more of a specific like how have you looked at it that way or how's so the ministry I'm give you a specific answer right this year in our budget is seventy five thousand dollars from my ministry to support this right and if we have 2,000 people that come, and each one of them spend $2,000, we believe that this is a tremendous success. But if we do our numbers and, and we make, we spend 75,000, and we have a million dollars of incremental spend that we weren't gonna get before, I ask you the question, is that good value for money? Have they spent that? Like if I give you 75,000, I get a million, is that good value? But have they, is Thank what I'm asking. You. Have they? Have, we just said earlier on, just to add on to what it means. Well, it's a projection. I'm just asking, yeah, um, yeah, have yeah, they? No, it's, it's here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the good thing about that is we're still in the beginning stages of the Cayman Islands Classic. So, so we're on the uprise and we're moving fast. And even, you know, not to get ahead of ourselves, but even the following year, we have amazing teams that have already signed with us for, for 2020. So we're excited for the future. Uh, you know, I can remember this back nine years ago when we first started this tournament. Uh, we started with nothing and, and, and had to go around and, 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 and prove to people what this could possibly be for the island, and it's turned out to be a great thing. It's, a, it's an event, and people get to come out and see some good college basketball and see what basketball is really about. So, so we're excited about the opportunities that, that, mm -hmm. that's here and that, that, and that, uh, that is coming. And last question, I'll pass it off. Apologize for taking up everybody's time. So, Joe, you look at this field. Last year, the Clemson was the name. Even You could even say uh, Georgia because it had uh, – you know, that had the high level coach, and then the year before that was Cincinnati. You know, you look at this field, I, the, the two things stand in mind Nebraska, top 25 preseason rank right now, and Sister Jean, the chaplain for Loyola Chicago, mm -hmm. which, you know, might resonate with the Catholic community here. Right. Um, so, what's the selling point for this tournament? Just because, on the scope of it, for the non basketball fan, there is no big draw big it's not it's teams. not a sexy field at least i would like basketball right you know right, what i mean I so totally i mean understand. so you're but what i've heard is that you're okay with that because the alumni are strong which fits in with the tourism aspect so is that kind of the plan you're willing to take a little bit of a loss on the names in order to get more people in as a general of a success of an event is that is right. that what I'm well, hearing? I mean, yeah, right, yeah, of course. You know, we, we want the North Carolinas, we want the Dukes, we want the mm -hmm. Kentuckys, we want all those guys to definitely come to our tournament one day. Uh, but but they have to see how the tournament develops. Uh, you know, we have great feedback from from everybody from from the NCA side of this. Uh, a lot of coaches are calling and asking about this. Uh, we even had Coach Crane last year from the University of Georgia. You know, was asking how, how do you guys get such good referees. We, they, uh, in other preseason tournaments, they don't have the referees that we have. But but going back to the teams, I, I, I'm kind of like with our tournament director on that. You can, you can say one year that, oh, we want this team because they were winning, but then the next year they don't win. It's, it's just kind of like uh, Cincinnati and Iowa was our big teams the first year, and Iowa didn't even win a game when they came over <laughs> here. And, and Cincinnati won it. We expected them to win it, and they had a great year and a great team, but they're always good. So, but then we turned around the second year and thought that, oh, Clemson's the top 20. Uh, Georgia's a big time school. 
Uh, Creighton's a big time school, but then we turned back around and, and Creighton and a couple other schools brought all the fans and, and won the tournament. So it's kind of a hit and miss type of deal. Uh, but, I, but I think our field this year uh, is very strong. I, I like New Mexico State. No one really talks about them, but they, they were like 27 and, and three on the season. And had North Carolina, I mean, they had Duke beat in the first round of the NCAA tournament and, and lost right at, the, right there at the end. So, you know, we're, we're getting teams over here that do, don't really get invited to a lot of preseason tournaments, but but when they come over here, they come over here strong. So we, we like Loyola. You know, they went to the Final Four just the year before. Uh, you know, and a lot of, we have, I think, three teams that are coming with new coaches. So Nebraska is always a good team. Uh, they're strong in football, but that doesn't mean that they're really strong in basketball. But but we feel that Coach Hoiberg is a great coach. Fans will follow. They want to come over and see. And plus, it's a cold, cold state. So obviously, they like to come down here for Thanksgiving and enjoy their time. So it, I think it's a great mixture of teams we have this year. I mean, even, no one's talking about Old Dominion, but Old Dominion's pretty good. You know, I, I had a problem, you know, with our tournament director when he first talked about them. But then after I started evaluating them, I was thinking they're a good team in our field. So. So uh, it's a hit and miss type of deal. So we just want to get the best teams in here and, and we'll continue to grow and have great facilities, great referees, great hospitality. Uh, we've got a great president. We have great ministries who's coming here and, protect, and, and taking this tournament to another level and helping us out. And, and we appreciate everything that's going on. When do you think the North Carolinas will come to the Cayman Islands? Well, see, okay, that, that's another hit and miss. I mean, when, you, when you're talking about, I mean, that's, that's a good question because everybody wants to know. I, I even want to know, but, you know, I, I know the answers is because, you know, when you're talking about a UCLA or you're talking about a UNLV, UCLA is on the West Coast. So they normally go to the Maui Classic or they go to another tournament in, in California or Vegas because it's easier, cheaper for them. You know, we know the coach now since he's the ex-Cincinnati coach, so maybe we can get UCLA to come down here. Uh, like It's like UNLV. It's the same way. They have three or four preseason tournaments right there in, in, in Nevada, and they get invited back to the Maui Classic every four years. Now, when you start talking about Kentucky, well, Kentucky's a whole different story because Kentucky now doesn't go to a preseason tournament because they feel like they go to the Maui Classic every four years, they take all the fans, they win the tournament, but they feel like they don't get anything out of it. So they just said, well, we'll just start having our own tournaments in our own gym and making all the money and keeping everything in house and we'll be fine there. So that's that deal with that. Now Duke, Duke and when you're talking about Duke and KU, you're talking about another, uh, that's, that's another, you know, the top five teams in the country. So they always go to where the recruits are from and those recruits are always in Chicago and New York. So that's where they go and play in their tournaments. Like the, the first tournament of the year is in Chicago or it's in New York and it's always Michigan State, Kansas, Kentucky and Duke. They always play in those places where they recruit players. So it's hard to get them out of that trend, but uh, we're definitely working at trying to get them to come down here. And we only need one a year to come down here. That, that'll be plenty good for us. We're, we're, we're excited about our field. We think, you know, we, we're strong with it. And we're getting better each year, so we're happy. Thank you very much. came in one more time um coach Voot, i think you I think it was you that mentioned um opening up the tournament for the young people just giving them the opportunity to sort of taste and see what this tournament is about and see the players play how important is that for Cayman's youth to to be able to see and and to get a feel as to what this is all about it's extremely important right now because of that tournament we have a total of 11 high school players outside. Good. And of the 11 players that we have outside, they, are, they all saw what the tournament, they came through the program and saw what the tournament has had. Now also, we have one young man, he's in New York, and another one in, there's another one in uh, California, right? And then we have Justin Collins also, who was just drafted in a top division two in California based on his performance. All these kids are getting an opportunity now to play, at the, to play at a higher level based on what they have seen and how they practice. So our, our practice sessions, for example, we have a, a team training. We're expecting a youth team to come here soon. We have 25 people coming for practice, and we only can pick 12. 
So again, we are seeing that we are bursting through the seams with younger players who are enthusiastic and want to come out. And then with the recruiting abroad has grown also. All right. So it's a win-win situation. It's, al it's always great for, for, for kids to come out and see high-level sports, period. Because when I was a kid, that was the first thing. I wanted to go watch an NFL football game or a college football game or basketball just to see what those guys used to do so I could implement that and try to do the same thing on the same level. So I think not just in the Cayman Islands, but I feel like anywhere around the world, if you have a major event that's coming into town and kids get to see it, they get excited about it, and, and, it, and it arises their – their mentality of what they want to do and, and gives them dreams and hopes and, and, and to play one day on that same level that they're watching these, these players compete at. So I look at it as all around, it's a good thing. I think college basketball is a great thing. Uh, that's all I ever really watch is college basketball or college football now because it's so competitive and, you know, they play for their universities. So that, that's what we feel that, you know, all the kids over here in the Cayman Islands, it's, it's good to see up and close what these guys go through and what they do and how they do it. So, so it gives them an idea of what they have to do to get to, to achieve those goals. And the awareness has risen. They can tell you of the players that visited here, mm -hmm. who's in the NBA right now. Right. The we kids have, can tell you. They're, yeah. they're, they're on track with everything. We have two NBA so players that's made rosters roster, from, yeah, our from our tournament. And yeah. the first year we had our, our tournament, there was no NBA scouts. So last year we had seven NBA scouts here. So we expect even more this year. So, so it's picking up. Uh, the same referees want to come back, and, and we have the best referees of all NCAA preseason basketball tournaments. Uh, they love it over here. Everybody likes it. We've had great feedback. So, so we're excited, and we're, and we're gradually moving up the ladder. And I have a dream. I want to say this dream. I have a dream. I, I would love to see the day when a tournament is being held here and a Caymanian kid is coming on one of the teams that's coming. Hopefully it's my son first. Right. <laughs> right. And that will be in the near future because we have a lot of good prospects. So this is what I'm. This is what I'm looking to see. The, the eight teams are coming. On the team, there's a Caymanian playing on any team at all. That will impact the gym. That will be a positive impact for basketball in the in the Cayman Islands. And it's going to happen soon. Trust me. What a better name, Cayman Islands Classic. <laughs> <laughs>